by high school you should already know what personification is so this video is just a quick recap for everyone here's an example of personification from Romeo and Juliet uh, Juliet's father says the earth have swallowed all my hopes now obviously the earth can't swallow things it's not human so this is a form of personification so what is personification essentially it's giving animate traits or human-like traits to inanimate objects or non-human things these pictures depict personification really well obviously none of them are human but they're all doing human things so why do we use personification well we can see from this example here uh, in john stomach's the grapes of wrath how tractors are described they're called snub nose monsters um, that raised dust, sticking their snouts into it, straighten down the country, across the country, through fences, through dooryards, and in and out of gullies in straight lines. The tractors came over the roads and into the fields, great crawlers moving like insects. Now, honestly, I don't have an opinion of tractors either way. I couldn't care less about them. They're just cars that are on farms, right? But through the use of personification, John Steinbeck has managed to make them almost like the enemy. He likens them to monsters. He uses words like crawlers and insects, things that bleh, I don't really like. Um, he gives them snouts that dig through things like pests. So through this uh, piece of personification, I actually care about tractors and I don't like them anymore. In this example from Lord of the Flies, uh, William Golding writes, the heat seemed to increase till it became a threatening weight and the lagoon attacked them with blinding effulgence. Now, again, I, I, this makes me care about the weather, but also it sets the tone. Um, I know the tone of the setting is one that is threatening, deadly, not safe, uh, and not a pleasant place to be as well. So through using personification, we can change the tone of something, in this case, the setting. And finally, uh, as in this example by, Romeo, by William Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet, the grey-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. This is from Friar Lawrence. Um, it's a great piece of imagery. Personification can really describe a scene, or the setting, really, really well. It's fantastic imagery and it allows us to really picture what is happening. So these are the three reasons we might use personification. Now, let's have a look at analysis. So, in Romeo and Juliet, through the use of personification, Romeo shows a contentious tone for love at the beginning of the play. Now, in Act 1, Scene 1, uh, Romeo is sulking in a grove of sycamores, and Benvolio finds him and goes to console him. Romeo describes his heartbreak and sorrow as his love for Rosaline, the girl he has a crush on, is unrequited, stating that love, although gentle in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Basically, uh, love seems like a nice thing, but being in it is actually really horrible. Um, by personifying love as gentle, the audience can interpret that being in love appears to be happy and easy, yet being in love can actually cause sorrow and heartbreak, as it is tyrannous when those we love do not feel the same. Through this, Romeo is revealed to be melodramatic. However, the audience does know that Romeo will fall happily in love with Juliet, even though it ends in their deaths. This develops the theme of fate in the play as love will eventually be tyrannous and rough with them, enough to bring them together and then end in their deaths. So we move up the levels. Level one, we talk about the personification, its effects, uh, why it's important, what we can take away from it. Level two, what that piece of personification reveals about the whole story, the whole characters, the whole plot, the whole setting. And level three, we make connections to the to themes or other texts or historical importance. Thanks for watching, guys.